Hey guys, I haven't recorded in a long time. I'm really excited to see what's coming up. I'm on chapter 55. Max, Annika, Vihan, and Tiza, she loved any kind of science project, experimented with cloaking the solar panels with lightweight cloth they gathered from the villagers. But even though material kept the panels cool, it also filtered out most of the sunlight. This isn't going to work, announced Vihan. Solar, solar panels need sunshine. We're blocking the rays. But something else might work, said Max, refusing to give up hope. She turned to Tisa. Do you have enough stuff in your portable chemistry lab to whip up a batch of silica gel? I think so, said Tisa. Why? Because I'm having a, an idea. A very cool idea. Max and Tisa hurried off to the lab, which was basically a tent, with a portable version of what you'd find in a college chemistry class. Plus, with all the tiny jars and vials filled with powders and li liquids you'd find in an old-school chemistry set. This isn't my original idea, Max explained. I read about it in a science journal about a technical breakthrough at Stanford. It was true. Most kids riding in the subway in New York City played video games on their handheld devices. Max Einstein read scientific journals, like Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Okay, said Max. Every time we go outside, we emit energy into the universe. Heat radiates off us into space as infrared light. Correct, said Tisa. Well. A bunch of, of Stanford engineers created a way to remove the heat generated by a solar cell sitting in direct sunlight and cool it off so it could turn more photons into electricity. What did they do? They layered a thin silica material on top of their solar cells. It's transparent to visible light, but if patterned correctly, it captures and emits heat as infrared rays. We need to create sheets of the stuff and stretch it over Klaus's cheap solar panels. No problem, said Tisa. Can you show me the article where they detail their design? Yes, said Max, clicking the keys on the lab's computer. Fortunately, we still have enough battery power left for the satellite Wi-Fi. I'm also going to send a few emails to the folks at SEE or C. Maybe they can rush ship some higher quality panels. Tisa and Max spent the next two days working in the lab. After they developed a small quantity of silica gel, Tisa called her father. Don't give up on us, she told him. This village is going to be electrified. Carl and Isabel drove to Lomobashi and procured bulk quantities of materials the team needed to create sheets of the stuff. The local kids, coached by Tisa, helped with hand etching and poking a pattern into the material. Two days later, when the temperature topped out at 105, Max and, and the CMI team covered all the cheap solar panels with a thin layer of translucent heat protection. On the third day, Max cried out, let there be light. She threw the power switches in Mrs. Diana's house. The lights came on. The electricity flowed. The same thing happened in the other five houses. The silica solution had worked.